So today I'm going to show you how I took these cheapo dollar store plastic uh, tea set and made them look like China dishes. I used two different methods to do this um, so I can show both of them to you. One of them is a wet painting and one of them is dry brush technique. Uh, but both of them start out the same. So I take super fine, at least 800 grit sandpaper and sand, just a light scuff of these plastic dishes because they don't really want to take paint. Then I use a primer. You want to make sure you get the kind that bonds to plastic. I like the Rust-Oleum. Also Krylon has a good bonding to plastic primer. Either one of those works great. You just want to do a few light coats, maybe two. So you do one light coat, let it dry, then you do another light mist. This is just so the acrylic paint will have something to adhere to. Once you have them primed, you decide what colors you want to use. These dishes I'm going to do today are going to be a robin's egg blue. So first I'll make my base color, which is the mid-tone that I want to use. You paint it all first and you let that dry. Then I'll show you how to do the highlights and lowlights and make them look a little more realistic. Once you have that set and dry, you have three colors essentially. You have your, your mid-tone, your low light, and your highlight color. I'm using the phthalo blue as my low light, I'm using white as my highlight, and I'm using my robin's egg that I made by mixing the two together. I'm just keeping it super basic. This is the wet brushing technique I'm going to use on the cups. So you take the lowest color and you put it in the crevices and I'll put it under the cup on the top of the base. I'll put it under the lip. This is where your shadow will fall. You just do really light, there's a little water, and then you mix it with a little white on where the highs go. It's okay if these mix together. This technique is very messy. <laughs> it's a little less precise than the dry brushing technique, but it is definitely faster. You're not waiting for your paint to dry, but you have to be really mindful of where you put the paint and how you put the paint and keeping your brushes clean, or you'll just wind up with everything being the mid-tone again. So I've put the blue under the rim. I've put the dark blue underneath the cup and I'm just going to add the white and the highs around the the widest part you see I got a little yellow mixed in there from the gold and that was an accident but for this it, it's very imprecise method and and it's okay like everything is kind of okay you're just mixing the colors and keeping them the lows where the shadows are going to go and the highs on where the light is going to catch and it'll mix together and you want the shadows to sort of blend down and be darkest directly underneath the lip and then fade out. So you'll have to add more white and you'll have to keep your brush relatively clean. So I'm dipping it in water and blotting on a paper towel and then going back into the white and they're mixing together. The colors are mixing together as all my paint is wet as I'm doing this. It takes some patience and sort of a fearless attitude to just go in there and just start throwing paint on it and mixing paint together. And you, once you start really seeing how light and shadow fall on an object like this, you'll get more precise. It just takes practice and patience. So for the plate, I'm going to show you just the dry brushing technique, which is probably going to be a bit easier for beginners. Um, it's, it's a bit more precise. It just, you have to wait for each layer to dry in between. 
So I'll take the same colors. I have my robin's egg blue and that's dried. Then I'll take my darkest color and mix it with a little bit of water so it's a little thin, almost the consistency of a watercolor. And you'll take that around where you want your shadows to be. You can see here I didn't thin this out like I should have. So this is going to be darker than I wanted it here around this lip of the plate. And I'll show you how to fix that. And you let that dry. And then I'll take a little bit of white on a dry brush and just go where I want the highs to be. I'm, I should have let this dark dry a little bit more. You can see it's picking up some of the white, which I really didn't want, but it's okay. And you just highlight that center portion of the plate. This time I watered down the blue appropriately. So you want the darker shadow color to be almost like a watercolor consistency. So you just add a little water to it and a really fine brush helps. And you'll go around those areas that you want to be dark, which I'm, these, this plate pattern has a raised pattern. So I'll just go around and do my shadow color around the, the lips of this raised pattern. Uh, you could also go into the finer pattern and drop some of this watered down dark color in there as well. But for the sake of this exercise, I'm just going to do the larger pattern. Once that's done and dry, you take your highlight, in this case I'm using white, and you put a little bit on your brush, and for the most part your brush is pretty dry, and you'll just brush that on ever so lightly to highlight the rest of this pattern with the raised pattern. So I'm just gonna go over, I'm not covering up the robin's egg blue completely, I'm just adding the white, and you're just running it along the top ridges of your pattern. Now here I'm taking some more of that mid-tone robin's egg blue that I mixed and just doing a once over on that dark blue shadow that was a little too dark. Again, when you're doing the dry brushing, you can always layer on top. So for this china pattern, I'm doing gold accent color. You can use any metallic paint or any kind of accent color you really want, but when you're working with metallics, it's important to remember that a lot of times metallic paint is translucent. So you need to add an under color as a base coat so it shows up. So for gold, I like to use just a yellow ochre, works really well under, under the bright gold. If you're doing silver, you probably want to use, you want to mix a gray. Purples work really nicely under silvers as well. Uh, burnt sienna works really good for copper and burnt umber works really good for bronze So just remember when you're using the metallic paints you want to mix a regular Flat undercoat so that your metallics really pop Now you can see the metallic is really shiny here. If I had just done it directly over the white, you'd barely see it. And I'll do my spoon. Now as a little extra 
oomph to my china plates, I like to use a clear nail polish or clear enamel to make it really shine. And I like using nail polish specifically because it's easy to get, it's cheap, it looks really good, it dries really hard, and uh, it just works really well. Like you get a lot of bang for your buck when you're doing the stuff that's really small. I'll use, if I'm doing a big project, I'd use, I'd go to the hardware store and get some clear enamel um, or uh, polyurethane works really well. But for little projects like this, clear nail polish does in a pinch. And that has that really nice glazed china look. We're ready for our tea party. And I'll put down in the description where I got this cute little cake. It's actually a keychain, a deco sweet keychain that my sister made. She makes these amazing little cookies and cakes and macaroons and these fake sweets, jewelry and accessories in her shop. I'll put the link in the description. Thanks for watching.